Hi, you guys. Ginger Cook here with another story time. This is a Friday, and sometimes we go and do story times on Fridays, but today we're going to be uh, reminiscing about some stories of uh, family drama, perfume bottles, and <laughs> be painting some perfume bottles. And, you know, sometimes these one story connects to another. You never know what happens. I might just tell you about the time my niece, who was two years old, fell out of the motorhome oh, going my, at my, 60 my. miles an hour on a freeway with a five-lane freeway. Some of these are some of the stories that I'm going to tell you. And as I paint this uh, painting of a still life of perfume bottles, and I'll tell you why I was inspired to paint it. So I hope you uh, remember these are not tutorials. This is a, these are paintings that have been pre-sold. And what I, I'm painting them anyway, I have a group to do, and we thought we would just go on YouTube and reminisce about some of the things that have happened in my life that some of you have found fun and interesting. I hope you do. And if you like it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and, uh, and let's get on with the story. I'm not sure if our feet is working yet. Is it? Well, it's starting off really slow. The uh. cash came up, but... Do we need to start again? I don't know. We're... Is there anybody out there to tell us if we're working? Let us know if you can see it, if we've moved on to the actual screen yet. I'm not saying I'm not giving it enough. It was doing this yesterday, where the screen came up. So, you know, this is always the fun thing about when you do a live show, as opposed to when you pre-record it, you always run into the challenges of doing a live show, yes and yes? Yes, no, I'm here. I don't see your hand up there yet. Is my hand here moving? No? There we go. All right. Are we on now? Yeah, I think we're okay. All right. So, um... Weird. I'm not sure what the first part came out or not. We'll see. All right. So if you're just joining us, this is story time. These, this is not a tutorial. Okay. These are paintings that have been, been pre-sold. And, um... Uh, uh, this is a 9 by 12 uh, painting I'm doing. Again, so the, um, but I will be telling a story as I paint it. If, you've, if you're new to story time, um, you can just sit back and relax. If you're doing something else, uh, you know, you don't even have to watch the painting. You might enjoy the story. And sometimes people just like to be a fly on the wall in an artist studio and see how the painting might go, yeah? So that's kind of what we're doing. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about a few things I think I mentioned in the introduction. We're not really sure if these, that played, but some years ago, I had a niece who, when she was about, uh, oh gosh, just two, just walking, kind of a toddler, and she fell out of, a, of, a, out of her dad's motorhome on a freeway, uh, rush hour traffic. We were going over 60 miles an hour, and I'll tell you how that happened. I'll tell you a little bit about that, okay? And, and I'll just share with you some just sort of different stories that, you know, um, I hope you find interesting as we talk today about um, things. And for those of you who have, have not done story time we've we've we if you, this week we've covered things like um you know my art agent and how you know tips on selling art yesterday we talked a little bit about boats and and cruising a little bit about that and today i'm going to start with a story about perfume bottles because when I was a kid, I uh, was born in Seattle, Washington, and before I was a year old, kind of give you a recap for those of you who are just tuning in, right? Before I was a year old, my uh, father had died, and my mother died that spring. And 
My father was in his 70s, and my mother was like 43, and they were, uh, so I had three older brothers and an older sister. My sister was like three years older than I was. And so, so, so we didn't go to relatives, though they did ask to have us. There were some relatives that would have taken us in. But it was set up so that the, the bank, my father was a multimillionaire, so the bank did some, um, you know, had people to watch us. So, you know, there was a governess and some maids and cook and all that stuff. And the house didn't look like much of a mansion from the outside, but it was, in a sense. It was very large. And interesting, just a side point about the house, was it was one of the first, my father had it built, it was one of the first houses to ever use um, steel um, studs. He thought that would have been a good, it never caught on, but uh, it's still standing because there's been no mildew or rot or termites or anything like that that's ever been able to affect it. Okay. And so when my um, was a little kid, the my sister, I guess she was three years older. My brothers were in school. Um, my oldest brother was ten when my father died. So the uh, so it was decided what to do with us on weekends. That always seemed to be a problem. What to do with us is that. We lived at the base of Volunteer Park in Seattle. And um, our backyard, it was very small. Uh, we had a very, very small backyard. But it, it, there was a gate and it led out with steps into the park. And then you could go from, you could walk through the park, never ever uh, I, I think we had to cross one road, but just not much traffic, you know. And then eventually you got up to the muse museum itself. And at the front of the museum, there were these uh, a stone. Uh, the, you know, there's no wonder why people from Egypt really hate us, everybody, right? That, you know, all the people that came over there and just said, this looks nice, let's not snatch this. So a lot of um, you know robbing of antiquities went on over the years, and this museum had two Egyptian it had it, it had um, two let's say it had two camels and life-size camels out of uh, marble and lions that you could and the kids would climb up on them, and that was great fun. You could sit on the lion or the camels, but I mean those were somebody's camels. They, they certainly they were, they were Egyptian. And I think there's an awful lot of antiquities that end up at the, um, end up somewhere else. In fact, we're going to digress a little bit here before I go on about the museum, because that brought to mind another story. This is what happens to me, you know. So I, I'd start off to tell you something, and of course I will continue to tell it to you. But the true story is that, you know, there was a time when even, you know, everything was Egypt. Everybody wanted something Egyptian. And it's, and I think I may have mentioned this before, but the paint tube was invented for watercolor in uh, right around the Civil War, around 1865. So by the time that, um, that um, uh, Monet and... Um, uh, Van Gogh and those guys were painting um, instead of pig splatters that you had to you know make the mix the paint yourself and make that you could actually buy paint in tubes and uh, and people did and then the quality was always a little questionable there was no regulation on well heck they weren't even regulating what on food why would they care about what went into your paint tube when you think about it yes so um, anyhow, these two guys, they were English, their parents apparently, they're teenagers or young men, parents were in, um, already in Egypt doing Egypt digging, diggings and stuff. 
and they got the brilliant idea to take, uh, they thought they, they wanted to get into the paint business. It was very new. For instance, Van Gogh's uh, paint dealer had originally been a pirate, you know, like Pirates of the Caribbean, one of those guys. Okay. So, um, um, anyway, so these guys went ahead and um, uh, decided they made a paint called Mummy Brown, and it's in a lot of paintings. This particular paint is in, uh, was, was sold all over Europe. And they actually stole Egyptian mummies and turned it into paint. And they were going gangbusters called Mummy Brown. They were making some good money on this too, dear friends. And crazy as it seems, I know that sounds crazy. And then they got... I don't know, the Egyptians got word of that and didn't want... Can you imagine somebody just taking their relatives and, <laughs> and turning them into paint for artists from, say, suppose they went over there and the Chinese started raising gra gra graveyards here and then putting them into their cars or something, right? The people. I mean, how outrageous, right? Well, this is outrageous. So certainly the Egyptians certainly had every reason to be outraged or something like this, yes? And, I mean, they were just hacked off. And so anyway... This stopped, but there's been a series of stuff that, um, that well, you could see where after a while, you know, the Egyptians might not think Westerners were their best friends, right? Yeah? Yeah, I could see that could be a problem. It, it, it was a problem, man. It was, it was a problem. Um, so, anyhow, and that's why I, I digress, but I just... So anyway, what happened to those guys was that they thought that perhaps it wasn't the mummification that was doing it. Maybe it was just dead people. Are you shocked yet? And so then they decided, that's a, one of those so then, then they decided what they would do is they would rob some, they didn't like being out of business and they couldn't, they lost their import license on mummies, you know. And so then they decided to, to rob some graveyards in England with the idea that perhaps it was just the dead bodies that did it, not necessarily the mummification. And, well, while the English apparently weren't that upset about the, um, the Egyptian mummies, though no one really knew, <coughs> start putting their relatives in paint tubes. And, well, that's a different story, right? Isn't that what they call a horse of another color, John? Yeah. A horse of another color, yes? Horse of another color. So then they got all wildly upset. And uh, the boys went to jail. And there's a true story. This is a true story. There was this one uh, English, uh, or rather American artist, and when he heard this horrific story about the mummy brown, he had a few tubes of that, and he invited all his friends over in New York, and they had a funeral and buried the paint tubes in the ground. Um, they didn't send them back to Egypt. Probably a good thing, you know, <laughs> just at that point, right? We've we found some mummies. They're now in this paint tube. We're so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little thing. You know? We're so sorry. Whoops. <laughs> Who knew, right? We're so sorry. We found this. And would you like these back? You can add them to the museum as part of your history, yes? So, um... You know, the, the, there are certain countries that have hitmen that go around and, and they don't like it. And you may have noticed that, for instance, uh, recently, if you if you're from Russia and you if you've angered the authorities, even if you go to another country, you're you're in danger of falling out a window. Maybe you've seen that on the news, right? And I think that we were all lucky that the Egyptians didn't react that way because they certainly had the right to feel that way, right? A lot of people could have fallen out some windows. <coughs> but they never did. They just never did act in that poor, poor fashion. But uh, I got to tell you that that's 
so when I look at those camels that I was sitting on and uh, uh, when I was a kid, they weren't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't originate in the States, I'll probably mean that, they were somebody else's camels, for sure. And it's a shame, I think, I think that kind of stuff is sad, uh, that people would um, stoop to those measures, but they do. So, yeah, Mummy Brown, you know. So anyhow, uh, but when we got to the museum, uh, we we would wander through. You had to get to get to the basement because it's where the kids' activities were. You had to um, go through this whole gallery of beautiful giant paintings. You know, when you're three or four years old. A uh, 48 by 60 painting looks That's humongous, huge. but some of those humong some of those paintings were humongous anyway. Very it's a good humongous. word, humongous, right? And um, and they're impressive. And, and did that influence me to become an artist? Props. I I couldn't couldn't say that it didn't. Yeah. And uh, when when you think back on. Uh, you know, just the time in the museum. But when, before we got to the basement where they showed the movies for kids, they had like a kids program. You know how museums are, they like kids programs. Uh, before we got to the museum, there was this display of tiny little miniature kid size perfume bottles from China. <gasps> Just fabulous. Oh my gosh, you guys. They were just exquisite. Probably still there. If you're ever in Seattle, you probably could see them. I'd like to go back, I think, one day and see them again. So I was mad for those. I just, you know what I mean? They would have gone in my dollhouse. They would just, made, well, they, they, most of them were probably about three, four inches tall, you know, like that. Some were bigger, but they were neat. There's no question about it. They were just neat. And so that was a big influence. You know, just think about, you think about things in your life that influence you. And that was certainly one. So anyway, I'm painting perfume bottles today. Um, and, you know, kind of the genesis of why that is might be um, deduced from some of the things that happened to me as a kid that I remember. Uh, I think about those movies we saw. We saw a lot of Greek mythology. I remember Medusa and they were sort of acting out stuff. And I remember all we said, we, you know, this was before television. You're going, what? And I said, yeah, there was no, we didn't have any television. I finally got a television. It was like two channels, like Howdy, one channel maybe, Howdy Doody or something. And for a long time, television wasn't much for kids. They didn't really weren't doing a lot of kids programs for on television. So uh, anyway, we, um, we you know watch movies and stuff and loved that. You know that was fun. That was just something to look forward to, and. Walking through the park, that was pretty. Years later, my sister and I went back. The house was up for sale, and we got a tour of it. And it was, it was as big as I remembered. There was a banister that went down, a big long curved banister that done, went down from the uh, to the entryway up to the second floor. Very, very tall banister. And my, I remember my sister and my brothers and I sliding down the banister to get to the bottom. Now, you know, when you think about that, you know, if we'd fallen, we would have cracked our heads on um, something. Would have been a bad, you know, thing, would right? Would have alley. cracked our heads. But we didn't really have anybody looking after our best interest in those days. And so I don't think anybody really cared whether we cracked a head or not, right? 
kind of a scary thought anyway, huh? So, uh, so I'm painting my little room with perfume bottles on it. And then I started to, you know, to talk a little bit about when we were kids, we had a chauffeur and we had a garage and we had a black car and I remember him saying that they, they only, cars only came in black, black, even in those days, early, early days, I really wanted some color in a car. That never quite understood um, you know this idea of black car and you know even today John and I will see people driving black cars in um, in Houston, in, in, Houston is, in, in this weather <laughs> and perhaps not understanding how solar energy works <laughs> <laughs> you know um, not that it takes rocket science to really understand that but still you'd have thought right you'd have thought You'd think. You'd have thought. So as we traveled on in our um, uh, travels, and we flash forward to um, my brother Jay and his and his uh, second wife. Sidman was uh, just a toddler. She was like. Um, well, no, she was like five, I guess. We'd gone up to see my parents in Seattle, Colby and I, and I was visiting my sister, and my brother had a camper, and it wasn't really a motorhome, but he had a camper, and uh, we, I don't know who we were, or where we were going at the time, but I had my sister was in the front seat with my uh, with my sister-in-law Mary Ann, and then uh, I was in um, the actual camper part of the camper with um, and my daughter Cinnamon was sitting with you know to, with my sister and the, the driver Mary Ann who was driving the car, and then. Um, uh, I was like I say in the back, and the baby. The, this was um, their toddler. You know, she was a toddler. She's a few years younger than Cinnamon. She had the run of the motorhome in the back, and so I could tell you the story. So, and that wasn't unusual. Uh, there were no laws about that. There weren't. You, you think about that in child safety laws and stuff. They just weren't. Maybe th th they. They weren't there yet, remember, John? Yeah. It, you know, there were some car seats and stuff, but if you were in a motorhome, none of the rules apply, that kind of stuff, right? Didn't matter what the rules were then because you were in a motorhome? Yeah. It was all different. It was all different. So, anyway, um, she had the run, this, this lovely kid had the run of the, had the run of the, um, the motorhome, and we were all talking and catching up, you know how you do, right? I mean, that's what you do, right? You're catching up with everybody and, you know, you're, what are you doing and all the stuff that happens to people and family stuff, gossip. And so Jeannie and my sister-in-law and I were just talking and there was a window uh, between the camper, the, the driver, and me. And um, it wasn't open, you know, it was just a window that was you, that slid open. and then you could chat. I'm sitting on the couch, and like I say, the baby's got the run of the, the place, but no one seems too alarmed, and that's what's happening with her. So we were, like I say, nobody was paying too much of attention to any of this. And I looked around, and we were all talking and everything, and I looked around, and I didn't see the baby. And 
I thought, oh man, they let her, she's in the restroom. So I, you know, this is tiny, this camper. So it took me just a second or so to look in the restroom and see what might have happened to her. And she wasn't there. And then I looked and the back door was open. And we were on the freeway, traffic, four or five lanes. Uh, yeah, we, four or five and, lanes and, of traffic. And the back and, door of the camper was open. And the back door of the camper was open. Yeah, John, the back door of no the camper baby. was open. And I'm looking, and we're going at 60 miles an hour, and I don't even necessarily see the kid at this point, right? I don't know how long she's been out of the camper, but she definitely was out, right? And I, I mean, I'm not real clear how, how out, far out she was, that kind of thing, right? So anyway, we, um, I run to, I go up to them and said, stop, stop, stop the van. She's out and Mary Ann's trying to stop it. You know, you're going 60 miles an hour and you're, you're in the middle lane. You can't just stop it that quick. It took us a, a good block to stop it. And then I said, and said, she's out of the camper, right? So we, we go running back. My sister says, I'll stay with Cinnamon. So, so we go running back, okay? And I'm running as fast as I can. And there's an underpass um, not too far down the road. And anyway, like I say, we're, we're running back like crazy people. And um, there's this guy, and he's um, holding a baby. He's holding her. He's got her name's Kimberly. He's got Kim. He's holding Kim. And, and I look at him and say, oh, my God, what happened? And he looks at me, and he said, this, this kid just fell out of the back end of this uh, <laughs> motorhome. Is that your kid? And I looked at them and I'm thinking, no, no, it's hers. And I pointed at Mary, <laughs> Just, no, not my kid, not my kid. I didn't do it, right? But the whole time I'm thinking, and now this is interesting because he's holding the kid. She's not necessarily, I don't know if she was crying or not, but scared probably. She's not injured. She's got a few skid marks on her hands for where she hit the pavement, and we think she hit an oil slick in the road. She must have hit something to smooth and, out her um, landing. Angels, maybe? Because you could, get, you could get more hurt falling off a swing than she was injured. Okay? That's how unhurt she was. Does that make sense? I know. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they, they took her they took her to the um, emergency room and she was uh, they said she was fine and it never made the 6 o'clock news um, Child Protective Services didn't come banging on their door small wonder yes um, well Mary Ann was in Child Protective Services she was in social worker for you know she kind of was that, that that's their that's the kid's mom but how she how this child survived is anybody's guess okay mm -hmm. anybody's an guess over that kid. how she survived is anybody's guess and there's always the people say i don't believe in miracles that was kind of i'm sorry <laughs> and and the fin interesting thing for me as as the aunt was my, what had happened was my brother had the lock was broken on the back door and he hadn't fixed it because she didn't know how to open locks yet. She was too little and she had not learned how to open doors or locks. So he didn't bother fixing it because, why? Because he didn't think that she, she knew how to, to open. How to open things? Open, open doors. And so she opened the door and probably the the suction from the wind just pulled her right out of the motorhome and that was that 
And so fast forward a few years later, uh, 20, and I, uh, John, uh, George and I, George Cook and I, um, and we hadn't been married very long, and we moved to Texas, and we moved into, uh, uh, you know, our house here in, the, in Texas, and we are just moving in, and one of our neighbors came by, nice guy, John, came by, and he to see us, and welcome us to the neighborhood, and at that moment we were um, painting the kitchen cabinets, I think, white, which was a mistake, but we did it. But that's another story. But anyway, John comes over and introduces himself, says he's got these three kids, and um, I said, and he was babysitting that day, and I said, how old are your kids? And um, he says, oh, he says, he said that what the ages were, and then he said, and that the youngest child um, was <coughs> was two, and I said, and he said, but I said, well, he's two, shouldn't she be home? He says, oh, he says, we have a pool, but I'm not worried because he doesn't know how to open doors yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's amazing so, what they know. Uh, I probably had known this man all of five minutes, right? When I start screaming at him, "Are you nuts? What do you mean he does that? He could? How do you know?" And I said, "You get your ass home and don't come back unless you have the baby with you. Can't leave a kid like that." And then later we on. He, he couldn't understand it because I had sort of a really mad, crazy reaction, right? I wasn't even nice about it. Go home. <laughs> Just go home now. Just now. You go home now. <laughs> you go home now. <laughs> Just, I don't know. But this is a, some of these stories I tell you really are cautionary tales if you think about it. Wouldn't you say, John? These are life lessons. You can learn life lessons right here on Acrylic Painting Channel. Yeah, they're cautionary tales. Indeed. Of um, things you really don't want to do. Yeah? That, that's what I would say. Things you want to, things you want to avoid. And... Anyway, his child didn't die. He was got home. He got home, and then later George explained the story to him. Um, so it was fine. Cause that was sort of a family story. But I know that if something had happened to my niece, nobody would have blamed my brother Jay for... Um, not uh, not not fixing that lock. I was in the back seat. I was the adult. I was technically, maybe, if you want to put it that way, watching that child. So if something, if that child had not made it, if Kim had died, I just want to say that I f f completely believe I would have been blamed for the whole thing. Oh, absolutely. And because they would, they, nobody would have looked to themselves. And do we know what Kim is doing today? Kim is, Kim is, uh, she graduated as a, uh, she was a wonderful uh, snowboarder. Family did a lot of skiing and stuff when she was young, only child. Well, she had a stepbrother and sister. And um, she uh, is a she's a little older than just a little bit younger than Cinnamon, and she lives in Lake Tahoe. And for a long time, she she was she programmed the ski lifts for the big ski resort in Lake Tahoe. And um, that's what she you know she did that and got to ski for free or you know or snowboard, and then she worked for the casinos for a while. But she works as a computer programmer, or you know. She got, got her degree in that. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, she lives, she's, she's got a lovely boyfriend that she's been with for many years. And 
one of the interesting things about Kim was the other thing that family, all of them did, Jay's family, was they were real big on, um, on soccer. And, you know, soccer's just heck on your knees. And, you know, Kim was in her early 30s when, uh, you know, she, her knees went out from, from the soccer playing. And insurance wouldn't cover it, but she was able to get a, um, a her, she, they actually took stem cells and grew new, new knee parts in the lab. Come on, you guys, isn't that crazy? And she paid for it herself and had her knees replaced with the stem cells, knee joints. They said she couldn't uh, play soccer anymore, but she could bike and, all, and hike and all that stuff. It's interesting to me about people with, when their knees go, because, for instance, Cinnamon's dad is 87 and still riding uh, dirt bikes up in the mountains. And, you know, that's where you stand up. And, and, and that's the, the stuff that happens to your knees there is not great, right? So the idea that he can do that with no knee problems and, you know, people like Kim can, um, you know, her knees can go out, you know, look at these, that, that early on, I guess, in life was interesting to me. Um, I was good till a few years ago. Now I get um, injections and sometimes they work better than others. I guess that's how I put that. This, this last time they haven't been as successful as I would have liked them to be. <clears throat> Go back in February and do it again. Maybe I'll have his PA by then. Well, yeah, and they just, they just didn't last, John. They didn't make it the first day. I don't know if he did it right or what, but I wasn't impressed. May change doctors. Ooh. Well, Medicare doesn't care. You don't have to keep the same doctor, and I'm not sure I like him. I got the feeling that my doctor um, was big on... Um, Let's get some paint here. Was kind of, you know, you come in, you see him for a second, and make, we make a house payment with our, with the bill he sends to the insurance company, and then off you go, right? I don't, don't, I don't, don't have warm fuzzies anymore for him. You know, I don't know if I ever should have, but let's just take my word for it, I don't. And, So anyhow, so back to uh, you know these 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 stories of I'm telling you about um, weird things. As I paint this, so anyway, Kim, Kim Kim's lived, lived happily ever after. Though she did have she had some very interesting stuff happen to her. She was dating a guy. He was a fireman. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but it does happen to be. She was probably in her 20s, and she was dating this guy. And um, he, um, they were up on Stoquelmy Falls, which is a, you know, um, kind of a national park area in Seattle. And there's skiing and everything, and there's a forest. There's forest for miles, and you can drive up on the road and go, go to national forest places. And uh, and she um, and her boyfriend were having a picnic, and there was this beautiful falls there. And he went to the edge of the falls to look over and went over. Oh, my. And hit, hit his head on the rocks below. And that was all she wrote. And she was, you know, out. She, there was no cell phone service. And... Mm. And then he was gone. They were just that married, fast. you say? Yeah, it's like in his 30s. Mm. Fireman. I know, that's just, you just think about it. How is that even possible, you know? But, you know, it is. And, you know, so I'm just, I was thinking about, you know, some kind of interesting things about Kim, but, um, 
uh, I think people could probably do well without something like that happening in their lives. But again, you just, you don't know, do you? We keep talking about that. You just don't know. You know, live life while you can. I think that's probably the message. With, you know, it's all going on here, right, John? I'm thinking so. You know, live, live life while you can. So, I'm enjoying painting this, you guys. It's all these pretty colors. But I woke up this morning and realized that I really wanted to tell you guys that story of her in the camper. I don't know why I felt the need to tell you that, only in that I feel like... Well, Keith, you plan on going camping soon and bring your grandkids along or something. Just cautionary tale. It's like a cautionary said. tale because just the night before, and I know this sounds crazy, but just that weekend or maybe like the month before or something, they'd taken her camping and she'd fallen into the fire too. She didn't get burned but on her hands. So Who's with this kid? I know. <laughs> Well, look, um, usually see this stuff with boys. Um, usually my friends with boys all had the, you know, had, had the um, accidents kind of thing, right? But um, you usually don't see that with girls you as much. Not. I mean, that's just generally not the way it goes. Not saying it can't, but... just generally hasn't been my experience that that's what happens. Cinnamon was a very lucky little kid. She, some of you know her as the art Sherpa. And um, she was a very lucky little kid in that uh, uh, she had really rode horses, did all kinds of things, and never, nothing ever happened. And, we were talking about, I think we were all talking about that yesterday, when we were all kids, people rode um, bicycles to school. I never had a helmet. Did you guys have a helmet? Never been seen out. Never had a helmet. Nope. Nope, never had a helmet. And But when, um, You know, nowadays, you know, the only people that don't seem to get helmets are um, ice skaters. Apparently that's all right for them to just fall down and die. Nobody's, you know, honestly, such a double standard. Just couldn't have a whole, you know, <laughs> whole thing on what I think about that, right? So I think I'll switch brushes for a little bit. Oh, let's see. Once in a while, there'll be a little silence where I'm just really trying to focus on what I'm painting here to the very best of my ability. Well, I think you're doing a Marvy job so far. So many colors and layers of colors in this particular painting. to think about how I'm going to mix those colors. That's part of learning to paint is really learning to mix the colors and that comes from, words can't teach that, that comes really from doing. 
and I often said, you know, you might want to just sit in front of the television set maybe one night with your paints on a little TV tray and look around the room and try to match the colors in the room, see if you could mix those. And, and could you? And if you did, what would that look like? Um, because the only way you'll ever, the only way to really learn to mix colors is to, is, is by doing it. Well, that's a profound statement. And then the thing about colors is that, um, like for instance, if you buy like a color mixing book or something like that, a lot of times your student paints will not mix. Did you know that? <gasps> no, they don't. They won't mix. There's some paints that, you know, working in, at Jerry's for a while and teaching, I got to see a lot of different kinds of art supplies and when people used them. And the people that, the, the people that had the best results out by, by far for color mixing were the ones that were using professional students because they, they want you to buy all the colors. They don't want you to mix them, friends. You know? I know, that's crazy, right? They really do want you to buy all the colors and not mix them. Let's see, so I've got... And that's what people do. They buy, they buy their paints. They see a color and they go. Um, when Cinnamon was in um, going to junior college, she was going to take some art classes, and the um, uh, you had to have so many so many people in the class, or they couldn't make what they call make the class. If that makes sense, you know, they couldn't couldn't have the class if they couldn't they couldn't find enough people to take it. All right. So, so Cinnamon wanted to take this one class, and um, there weren't enough people. And I got my friends. I said, "Well, listen, if you're in, it, it's a, it was junior college, and I said, you know, because we lived in the district, we could take it for a couple hundred bucks." So I said, "Look, I really wanted to encourage her, and I didn't want her not to take the class. Does that make sense?" So um, I said, "Look." What we'll do is that I'll, and me and a couple of our, my friends, we'll take it too. That'll make the class, and that way you can still have it. And I, you know, so we took it together. This this one painting class by this lady, it was Bonnie, was teaching it. And from what I can tell, she hadn't herself. Now I just this was just an observation. I can't say for sure it's true, but. It felt pretty true. Does that make sense? It felt pretty true, yeah? She didn't know how to mix colors particularly. So she had us go find baby food jars. And this was um, where the, there weren't any baby food jars anymore. I mean, you really had to look for some baby food jars because they just weren't around. And uh, she wanted us to find these baby food jars. And, um, and then when we mixed a color that we really liked, when you got a really good color, she said, what she wanted you to do was put the color in the baby food jar. And then you'd have it. Mix enough so you'd have the color. Well. What's a really good color, you guys? What decides what a really good color is? Well, really good colors, I mean, you know, that's, that opens a lot to interpretation, doesn't it? Don't you say so? I think so. Just a lot of interpretation. And, you know, I'm just trying to be supportive of my daughter. I don't want to cause trouble. That's all I can do to keep my mouth shut because I want to hop up and down the, t and the seat and tell her she thinks she's crazy, okay? Um, but 
she kind of was, in my opinion. I mean, she was just so far off on this whole idea of the really good color. I, 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 words can't express what I really thought about that, right? And, uh, yeah, I know. You're going, no, surely she didn't think that. And I'm going, oh, yeah, she did. That's what she thought. And so the thing is, is that turquoise and orange together are really good colors. When you have complementary colors together, they're really, really good. There's no such thing as a really good color. It's in relationship to where else you were put, you're putting it. And so that to me was um, very interesting because when you look at how artists taught, um, I think the word taught, I just always felt that, that art, art really wasn't taught in a way that, you know, they would teach math or English. They, you know, they, they wouldn't tell you if you were taking a, um, an English class, for instance, they wouldn't, they wouldn't feel compelled to tell you well, or no, like a math class, they would say, when you get a really good set of numbers, something that really is nice, <laughs> just write them down somewhere and keep them, because those are really good numbers. <laughs> just. So what are you trying to say? Uh, yeah, right? You're going, God, Ginger, are you kidding me? I'm going, no, I don't kid. I kid no, no kidding on this. I absolutely promise you, Ginger's not kidding. This is what she said. And this is what... I know, I know. I, I, it's, it's dumbfounding to me, too. I know you're just all shocked, but that was the deal. That's what she said. And... She sounds we so we took a trip to the Manil Museum in, in Houston. Uh, which was fun. I like outings, right? We all met down at the Manil Museum. And the Manil, Mrs. Manil was a multimillionaire. Her husband was in oil. And I think she was bored. I'm just paraph you know, I'm just guessing here. But I would say from hearing a little bit about her life, she's probably bored out of her tree. Lots of money and nowhere to spend it. You know, nothing, you know, after a while it got old. And she started an affair with this French painter, okay? And he um, painted circles, continuous circles on a chalkboard. And I have to stop and show you this because you really won't believe it, okay? We're just going to take a minute. I'm going to show you that. Because you won't believe it. And if you get down to the Manila, you can have the privilege of seeing this junk hanging in there in this fancy. The museum is gorgeous. The best architects in Texas, I think, designed it. Beautiful, beautiful art museum. And then you've got this tw guy was named Twombly. You can look him up on the internet, Twombly. And then you can see what his artwork looked like. And when I was a kid learning handwriting, by my 80-year-old teacher, whoever. She seemed like Methuselah, right? <laughs> was she really 80? I don't know. She was old. You know, I got pictures. She was old. And even in my pictures, she still looks old. Okay? This is Twombly stuff. Now, you imagine something the size, like this, the size of a wall. Okay? This is how you learn to paint with your shoulder and not with your... No, with just your arm? Not with your fingers. See how relaxed my hand is? This is the exercise you do for handwriting. This is what everybody had to do. And, um, I don't know if he was making a statement about how he hated school, but imagine a giant wall of this. <laughs> yeah? And um, and then we went into, there was an alcove where there was some other art. And 
Uh, let's just find my pens here. There was some other art, and uh, uh, there was one canvas that was just white. It was like 40 by 40 with 50 by 50 on it. It was big. And, and it was just kind of white. It was thick paint, different kinds of white, but mostly just white or off-white. And, and I said, do you tell me, why do you think this painting right here is in, in the museum? I'm very curious. And she said, well, she said, it's in here because no one else ever thought about it. And he was the first one to think about it. I said, sure, they thought about it and thought, dumb, and moved on. Dumb, dumb idea, dumb idea, no, nope, nope, nope. Um, I'm saying, the problem with having an older student is that, you know, you get wise people like me and they're like, wise asses, <laughs> right? They're going to go, really? And, but she had had a, you know, the teacher had just gotten her master's in art, history of art and stuff. And, and there's a group of people who absolutely believe this stuff. I mean, <laughs> and it really reminds me of the emperor's new clothes because everybody's afraid to say, it's stupid because if you don't, you know, the thing about it is you get around people, the artists, and they've got their master's degree, and they get all snotty with you, and then they want to say, um, well, if you were educated, you'd really understand this. Yes, we know it doesn't make sense, but if you really were in the know, if you really knew this, if you really, really understood this, you would see how brilliant this is. And the only reason you don't is because poor you, you just were um, a heathen, you just, you're clueless. Yes? Well, the paint's not coming out of that one. Let's try a different one. You're absolutely clueless. Um, so, Yeah, right? So anyhow, um, don't let people intimidate you with that stuff. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Now, it's true that um, uh, maybe somebody would find a white canvas restful. Maybe a sheet would work. I don't know. If you go to all the trouble to get a white canvas, you might just be able to use a sheet. What do you think? Maybe a sheet. I don't know. Uh, just people are so funny. I think so funny, and you know what? And, you know, kind of this feeling of wanting to feel a little special, maybe. And um, all right, you're just gonna. That one just isn't working, so I'm gonna put that up here so I don't keep grabbing it. Let's see if I can find another one. I'll paint something else while, I'm at, while I've got this one going. So anyway, we went and we spent the t time at the Manil, and I got the... Uh, and then we came to, um, we came to a, a section of the, um, of the museum where there were just, there were two colors. The painting was divided in half, not quite perfectly even, or maybe not quite a third and a two thirds, right? Two colors. And and um, and I said, and why do you feel like this one deserves to be in this museum? What is special about this piece? And she said, well, this is called figure ground reversal. It's called what? Figure ground reversal. Figure ground, ground reversal. reversal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what that means, if you're in the know, Okay, you really show you've got this great art education because you'd know something like this. You know, if you knew this, you'd know this kind of thing, right? What that means is that uh, you don't know whether the green is in front of the blue or the blue is in front of the green. It could be either. Now, they're laying side by side. And so how could I one don't know. The other? It really reminds me of those monks that we're talking about back in the, you know, the 
I don't know, when the monks first showed up on the planet, <laughs> um, when they were talking about how many angels could dance on the head of a pin, and they'd have great debates about that. It's that... Well, you know, what's the answer to that? You know, um, it's that, that kind of thing. It's definitely that kind of thing, yeah? You got my curiosity up on that one. Yeah, I mean, figure ground reversal. You can look it up, John. Figure ground reversal. What is that about? And so sometimes there's a time in life when you run into people like my friend Akadriana who believed everybody was that everybody uh, with, that from her planet was named Aka something. Remember that, my art agent? There's the time to argue with people. And there's the time to just let it go. You know what I mean? Just, just let it go. Just not, not worth the fight. Do you really care if they know it? I think one of the lessons that kind of I learned from... Um, living with Cinnamon's dad was there are just some arguments that are just not worth having. You know what I mean? Yes, you might be right. Uh, as they said in the movie Harvey, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Because, <laughs> really? I mean, just, you know, if you're not out on some pilgrimage to let people know the truth of the world or that they should all know your truth, or somehow that they, they will suffer for it in some, in some terrible universe where they don't know it, they're going to be sorry. Um, wow, then maybe just let it go, huh? What do you think? Just let it go. So... I could say that about so many things. You just, maybe it's because we were in school, we were taught that it was important to have the correct answer. I had a wonderful friend, um, well, I still have her, but I haven't talked to her in years, but a great friend when she was living in the States, uh, from Bulgaria. She was born in Bulgaria. And my friend Didi truly believed that uh, the people from Bulgaria invented the airplane, not the Wright brothers, that Bulgarians were the ones to invent it. And, you know, as an American, um, there's a temptation to just, you know what I mean? You're, you're talking to a foreigner there in your country. Perhaps you just need to set them straight because they shouldn't go around with this bogus knowledge. This is bogus, man. <laughs> I mean, how do we know that? Because we were told in school that we invented the airplane. So obviously we did. Why would they lie to us? I'm not saying they lied to us, but why would they, right? And, but Dee Dee felt the same way. She said, why would they lie to me? Well, they're communists. We could start with that, but then, you know, <laughs> just, that's not nice, right? <laughs> so you're thinking, oh, well, I don't know, Dee Dee, but... Um, uh, <laughs> I can say is that that's kind of not the mes memo that we got when we went to school. Okay, fair. That's a, fair that, that a yeah. fair thing to say. That's that. That's not what anybody told us. Yeah. So, and then Dee Dee went on to explain to me that um, uh, uh, that she. Um, Right back here. Uh, not only did uh, they invent the um, airplane, yogurt uh, was another one. Dan and yogurt was, they stole it. It was really invented in Bulgaria. I don't know. Uh, but there was a party line that she definitely was quoting, right? Does that make sense? And she had it. and. She believed it, and the thing of it is, is that it, 
at some point you can just decide, do I want this friend or do I really want her to know about the Wright brothers and how this really worked, okay? I mean, how much, how far do you want to push something like that? That's, you know, that's kind of what you have to ask yourself, I think, on some level, is that what am I going to, what am I going to tell people? So I'm going to take a second right now, and I'm going to stand up and move, because I've been sitting for a while, and my legs are cramping up crazily, and I'll give this a chance to dry. John might... I have nothing. <laughs> John, I'd like John to talk, to talk about some of the other, show some of the other paintings that we've done uh, for Storytime and tell people a little bit about our art school. And, and I want to thank everybody for, uh, you know, watching as this painting is unfolding. It's kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> Just, come on, how fun is this? Don't you know about the colors? And John will get up and John's going to grab a few things and do that because um, as fun as it is to paint on YouTube, John and I actually have a business of teaching people to paint. And we start, if you've never touched a brush before, we have beginner tutorials for one cookie. We call them cookies, one and two cookie lessons. And we have it where you can send in your artwork to me personally, and I will look over it and tell you a few things just to think about. We don't correct, I don't correct everything. It's not a big critique and everybody's afraid to send it to me. Send it to me because I can just take your artwork and help you, help you see because really art is about seeing, painting is about seeing, and I help you see what to look for when you're painting something and your mind just starts to click and see shapes and colors and, and it's fun and it's easy and it's extremely affordable. And as I get up and just move around a second, John is just gonna show you a few uh, pictures. We'll let that dry. Assuming I can still get up, you guys. <laughs> okay. You want to unho un undo my, take my the microphone off or just turn it off? You're off. Okay. Okay. So here we are. We've been doing this for a while now. We've got a, a few, <clears throat> few more paintings to do. These are some that we've done on other story times. Some of these we do, um, Ginger just feels like she wants to paint, and we don't do a story time because I'm busy doing something else or whatever may happen. This is one that we did, a little farmhouse, a bar in the mailbox. Try to keep the paint off my fingers. Here's another one, a uh, Anirandach chair and a hat in it. Those were six by eights. The six by eights were for the red members that signed up for a year, a yearly red member um, <clears throat> for one year. Uh, this is a special we had during November and December of 2023. And it probably won't be repeated again. We had a lot more people take advantage of this than we thought they would. We appreciate that though, we really do. Just now we have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of paintings to do. Another one is the church with the lavender fields out in the, out in the fields. That's a pretty one, I like that one. And we just did a rocking chair and a kitty cat with the kitty cat on it, that, that was a recent one. Kind of nice, very impressionistic style. And one of my favorites is this boat, this old dock. We called it uh, the, uh, down the Louisiana Bayou. I think that came out absolutely stunning, as we say. The colors and the details in that. The colors that Ginger gets are just amazes me. Can we do a close up on that? How do you like the way I zoom in? Now, this one's been uh, varnished, so it's hard to you can see the glare. So, pretty cool, isn't it? What a zoom lens. That's great. And one of our other recent ones, the glass vase and columbine flowers. And then one of my absolute favorites. Now, I don't think anybody's claimed this one yet. I could be wrong. Fit? Not quite. This was the old Texaco station 
Again, we were down in the bayou doing that one. It's a 12 by 16. Now this is for a three year purple member. Got the 12 by 16s. That's pretty cool. Look at the reflection. Look at look how wet that looks down there. And that's what I brought over with me this first round. So just just hang on a second. We'll we'll bring some more over. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat, and Liz will help me go through them. Or well, I'll check them when I get back. Just give me a second to come back in here. about sitting over here I have no idea what's going on on the computer no that's a, a field uh, 8 by 10 so this was for a purple one-year member I like that one too that's that's nice this is our wine falls just did that one the other day I'm saying, hey, I've, I've taken over. Okay. You've been replaced. One of my favorites. This is our Michigan waterfall, a little stream, a little waterfalls in it. And a classic. And a gypsy wagon. Again, these are 12 by 16 for three year purple members. Signed up during our December, November. And the last one for now would be the strawberries and birdies. Yeah. And it, you can't talk. I can't talk. Well, you can talk, but nobody hear you. Okay. You want me to turn you back on yeah, so you can I talk? Yeah, I took the coat off by mistake and I have to readjust it. Let's put the mic back on. Make sure everybody can hear me. Oh, yeah, wait a second. Got to switch the water. Okay, talk for a second. Talking, does it work? Yep. Okay. All right, Just Queen's getting, back. Yeah, I got a chance to go up and down the stairs, kind of stretch my knees out a little bit. Now it sounds crazy, but. All right, so. All right, entertaining, yes and yes. So we hope you, hope you're entertained. So anyway, before, well, you got to see a little bit of what we're painting. And then we have a lot of the favorite ones are gonna be, uh, similar paintings will be tutorials in our academy, but not the exact same ones. We told people they would never be tutorials. They may be puzzles or other things, and we may nice license some of that, but uh, we wanted everybody to have the opportunity for an ori original painting. You know, something that they could, you know, be really happy with. I paint my perfume bottles in. So I think we were talking about, you know, just when you know something to be true. Well, they're saying, for instance, right now, that information that you learned in school, most of it's probably inaccurate, 
And then every five, four or five years, they got whole new stuff that they now know that we didn't know. So, um, you know, maybe my friend Edie's um, is absolutely right. Was absolutely right. But there's a tendency to, uh, you know, believe your own. You know, I mean, you, you learned it in school. You were a kid. You trusted the adults. That's to the, the best of their knowledge. That's what happened. You, you can tell, like, for instance, if you talk into um, people from another country and talk about a war, you know, they're going to talk about different aspects of the war than um, particularly the losing side is going to have a different story about it than the winning side. It's just, just the way things go. There's a lot of ways to paint things. There's a lot of truth in art. And also there's just a lot of... Um, uh, I'm reluctant to say the word um, BS, but um, there is some of that too. Absolutely. There's absolutely some of that. And, you know, it's a shame that that's what it is, but it happens. And you may hear something on the, on the channel from, say, one YouTuber that's teaching painting, and then you'll hear me, and I may I teach something different. Cinnamon and I have a big argument on how to varnish. <laughs> you know, she's wrong, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we don't talk about it at Thanksgiving and say, you know, I still can't believe you think you varnish like that because that is just so dumb. There wouldn't be any more Thanksgivings when you do that, right? But, you know, whatever you do, you just sort of have to make it work, work for you, right? And I can promise you that if you're trying to learn to mix colors, that start with the good colors first. Um, I had a student that just loved buying colors, even though she was taking lessons from me. She just insisted on buying colors. And I said, at some point, you know, you could actually, if you have our color mixing journal, you can actually get by with like, you know, seven colors in white or something. I mean, it's just really, you can mix them all. Um, it isn't necessary to, I um, guess we'll just continue this on and put the flower over it. I've got a flower that's going over this mirror, but I'll just do that with it. Finish with the mirror. And one of uh, my um, probably uh, see John George John somebody closed this. Let me put some white paint in it. People always ask me what I like to paint. I like to paint anything with color. I when I was designing colors and paintings today, John and I, and yesterday and the day before, that's all we seem to do is design art. But um, I, I came, you know, I did a study of something similar to this, but just very masculine looking, and it's pretty. It really came out nice. I just wasn't really compelled to do it. I think I'll have to do it at some point. And the reason being is that. Um, uh, See, and I didn't want that there. I'm talking to you and not paying attention. Did not want that there. I want that over here. Thank you. Uh, now I got. Good. I, where was I going with that, John? I had to put out the white paint, and I totally forgot where I was. Trouble with getting older. He's not listening. He went and took a break doing something. Okay, fine. That's fine. Well, well you know, I, I'm going to need a little bit of your help, John. Let's see. This is not good right here. This has to be level to the top and bottom of the canvas like that. Okay. All right, just was trying to figure out where I was talking about for a minute ago, but you you were off doing something. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I know. How could he? It's just he should be listening to every precious word I say, and then and then tell me <laughs> where 
where I left off in the, I don't know what we just, what were we talking about, right, kind of thing. But just probably what spurs these stories on is, you know, a lot of these things like the, um, the cautionary tales or the idea that, you know, um, what, there's one YouTube artist that told people that you could use KY Jelly as a binder to, to make your paint last long. And so many people believed what he said that um, golden paint went to the grocery, went to the drugstore and bought all kinds of that stuff to see if you actually could, in fact, add it to paint and have it last longer, whatever the deal was, right? And of course you can't, but uh, that, that's, I, I say that because that's how crazy it can all get. Yeah? That's absolutely how crazy all of this can get. Um, with just, you know, rumors flying around. And then, and then they just take on a life of their own, for sure. It, which is, again, crazier still, yes? Um... And then pe people are just absolutely determined to think that, you know, that that's the case. And, no, this is true. We, you know, I saw it on YouTube. So it must be true. Must be true. I saw it on YouTube. Why wouldn't on it be internet. true? Why would, and, I mean, I'm not saying that people are deliberately lying to you. Maybe they think that's true. But, you know... You know, th some things that we can tell you for true is that you can't, that, you know, if you practice something, the people that we have found in our art school, online art school, that have done absolutely the very, very best of anybody are the ones that send their artwork in for personal art coaching and paint. They take the time to paint, watch the videos, and study, and study it. To say that that's that's right, John, and you may have heard heard us say this before, but we know, you know, honestly, I'm not. We can just say statistics, you know. At least, at least statistically speaking, that has been our experience of the people that were the most had the best success from, um, um, you know, from learning to paint, and it's okay. There seems to be a resistance sometimes for people to um, not want to get better. I'm fine the way I am. You know, I'm never fine the way I am. I paint all the time. I think I get better all the time. I thought I was pretty good, you know, t 20 years ago. I'm better now than I was then. I thought I was great 20 years ago, and I had publishers, and people were buying my artwork and spending thousands of dollars. But you get, the more you do it, you just get better at it. And it's fun to get better at it. And it's fun to challenge yourself with things, too. That's sort of fun, too. And it's okay if the first time you try something, it doesn't work. That can't matter. It can't let stuff like that matter. It's got to be, it's got to be, um, it's got to be fun, right, John? Absolutely. It's got to be fun. I think that brush is too grabby. Let's not use that one. Uh, sometimes you just get a brush and they wear out. That was one thing I learned in that class from the lady that thought that, um, that there were just good colors and you put them in baby food jars. Um, she explained that she's the one that taught me to sand your canvas. And she said the reason you do that is because your um, your brushes wear out like sandpaper on the on the canvas. And if you don't need the texture, like if you're doing a palette knife painting, you might need the texture. But if you don't need the texture, um, sanding it is and, and, and just with very light sandpaper. You don't have to do a lot. Just very very light sandpaper. Um, you don't again. You don't. You don't need that much. But um, it's it's a it's a, it's a good practice. Yeah. 
Drawing in between is a good practice. Drawing your paint in between so that you can layer. Like for instance, I'm going to put some some um, color on here, and because we let let everything dry a little bit, um, I've got a better shot at uh, you know getting the effect I want because I dried it. Okay. So, yeah, there's stuff, you know, stuff like that can make a difference. Paint, you know, the thing that you know for sure is that um, acrylic paint dries darker. And I could have sworn I had a light streak in this mirror right here, coming down just possibly with a little tiny bit of yellow. But mostly white paint. I mean, I swore I had that, but it disappeared like he split, right? It was there a moment ago. It was there a moment ago. Okay, is this lady ever going to get to painting those bottles? I'm going to have to wait all day to see if she ever paints them. <laughs> but there's a lot to this painting besides the bottles, you guys. It just, just happens to be and in the layers that I'm doing. But that's all right. We will get her done. So back to story time. And then we've got through the cautionary tales about, by the way, you might want to consider, uh, you know, that not every source you hear on YouTube is reliable. And you guys all know that, right? Um, Like here's a good color, it's the orange next to the thalo blue. That's what you'd call a good color, but in the jar by themselves, if you want just a really good color, the paint tube, the paint companies make every color under the sun. So you could just either buy all the colors, okay, you know, rather than put some in jars, because I've now pronounced this a really good color. It's so crazy. Because if you remembered how to mix the formulas, um, if you like cooking and say, this is, these are really good biscuits. I'm going to put them in the jar here. We're not going to have any more. If you want a biscuit, you know, these are the really good ones. Mm. I know you're going, well, that's a bit of an exaggeration, Ginger, but you know what I'm saying? That's, I'm still stuck on that really good color stuff because it's so, to me it's so, you know, it's just like cuckoo time crazy. If you lived in the time of the Impressionists and you were like Van Gogh, still trying to buy paint, you might find that um, certain paint manufacturers uh, were more reliable than others, and they cost. Now, and I'm not just talking about the mummy brown here, that just certain colors are hard to do. Certain colors in uh, reproductions are hard to do, like reds are hard to reproduce. Those are color people making uh, prints. That reds are reds are really um, are hard are hard colors to make. 
and uh, red being a primary color, uh, for instance, cadmium red um, medium is made from cadmium. And uh, cadmium is ex very expensive. So, so, so much of your paint costs are from uh, the ingredients, how much is in the paint. The Windsor Newton, Windsor Newton is famous for their best, for the most really quality watercolors, okay? And they've got a paint that they make that is, um, takes them six months. It's up in the attic. They're still making it the same way for the last hundred years. Seriously, last hundred years they've been making it the same way. And uh, in the formula secret. So something takes six months to paint. It makes sense that it might cost a little more money to buy than a student grade watercolor or acrylic that they just, you know, ran through a machine and, and made. Yeah. So a lot of times when you're when you're buying paint, you'll go on the paint tube, you'll see a number uh, see, I don't know about golden, where their number is. Uh, you will, it more, more like I can show you for sure on Matisse. Um, you have to cut around for golden, but on Matisse, this is series four on the red. Okay? That's uh, a, a one, white is a one. So the higher the number, the more expensive the paint. Now, while all of that is true, okay, for sure, all of that is definitely true, the, um, everybody's got a different number system, really. Yeah, everybody's got a different number system, so just like the same with brushes, the systems are all slightly different, so, but you do know, you can pretty much take to the bank, though, that if it's a higher number, it's a more expensive. It's more expensive. That's how that works, because there's more stuff that goes into the paints. For instance, we met a a man that um, makes very expensive oil paints in, in in the United States, but he's an English guy, and he he makes them the way that they were made 200 years ago. And um, His um, his paint tubes. He's got some white. He's got he's got some white that they make from uh, causing white rust to happen over six months time, and then they turn that into white paint. And you think he has like seven different tubes of of white paint. And acrylic acrylic people have. Titanium and zinc, and maybe like buff titanium, which isn't really white. They've got that. But um, the, the actual white uh, paint that, you know, the titanium, there used to be, some, some paints were made white, was made with lead. And the problem with that was, is that it killed you. Um, some people are very allergic to cadmium and um, cadmium paints, and they actually can uh, break out into some sort of, you know, anaphylactic shock with it. Seriously. And while that's not, that's not the norm, for sure, um, 
depending on what's in the paint, you know, it used to be, for instance, it uh, used to be very dangerous to uh, for certain chemicals that went in the paints to make them and to and to have them. But for the most part, acrylics, they use acrylics in um, schools because acrylics um, are the least, they're the most non-toxic, you know. Um, people don't die eating them, though they don't recommend it. Um, like I said, acrylics, acrylics are probably the least offensive of the paints. As far as you know, I'm sitting here now, I'm getting into a very. I'm going to just pause for a minute, you guys. I'm getting into some very complicated stuff on my wine, on my perfume bottles, and mostly I can talk and paint. But sometimes, this seems to be one of those times that becomes a little bit more of a challenge to me than normal. I think that's fine. Huh? You don't have to sit there and blab the entire time. Or these people are supposed to be flies on the wall. They're flies on the wall. So you get some story time and then you get... You get some silence. Point. Yeah. Silence is golden. If you have any questions that I might be able to ask, you can go ahead and put them in. That would be nice, John. Maybe you could pick up the slack here for me. I can pick up the slack. I'm sure you'd love to listen to me blab. We got here a question. Can someone tell me why I can't get on story time on time? Because <laughs> there is no set time. I click on the link, go to YouTube, make sure it's on live, and nothing. I refresh three times, try it again all. Hmm. Well, Miss Peabody, I would ask you what kind of device are you on? Would be a good place to start. We don't have a set schedule on the story times. We do send an email out through our newsletter system. If you're not subscribed to that, it costs you nothing. If you just go to paintingwithginger.com and go down to the bottom of the page, there's a form there. And that way you'll be notified when we do that. We send them out when we think we're going to go live, but uh, we've been about 15 minutes off each time, so I don't know what to tell you. Either rush over or take your time coming over. These are available for replay at your convenience. And remember, these are not to be painted. These are already commissioned pieces. These are all copyrighted by the Ginger Cook Studios facility. And they are for the end users that have that will be receiving them. We have any other questions in here? I'm going through. You might mention that we do do uh, tutorials that can paint every Monday. Uh, we do have Monday show live, 5:30 Central Time, where we do actual teaching of how to paint. And questions and answers, and a good time is had by all, by all at those as well. Question came up, does, why do acrylics dry darker? Uh, there's several reasons for it. As the paint dries, the water evaporates, which causes the, the acrylic polymers to get closer together and they become more concentrated with the pigment, which darkens them. So there's less dilution with the water. Um, some of the pigments themselves, they, they'll shift hue slightly as they dry. That's the characteristic of the hue. Uh, the, the thing to learn is, as you're painting, you've got to become accustomed to this and start learning how much they're shifting so you can adjust your painting as you're going. Just going through this. List here, see if there's anything else in here. Hey, we'd like to thank Jules for the donation that came in. Thank you, Miss Jules. I just noticed that. 
Uh, Jules made a comment, our whole family, our whole house, household agrees with your varnishing techniques, not synonyms, but we'd love, love her too. It's always good to take sides. Just don't do that at Turkey Day. What else we got? John should do Vanna, Vanna White hands with showing the paintings. <laughs> Thank you. on the questions at the moment. You didn't see, you don't see any others? Nope. If you're not a subscriber to our channel, we welcome you to do so. That costs you absolutely nothing. It does help us. It's so funny. My own niece won't subscribe because she doesn't subscribe to stuff, right? <laughs> like, you know, and I get it that there was a time in the world where, like, you know, Reader's Digest and you subscribe to, like, a gym membership. And we talked about this before where, um, and then maybe, maybe you'd have a difficulty um, with that, something like that, you know, if you, th that kind of thing. But for the most part, There's absolutely that we can figure out no reason why you wouldn't wouldn't want to subscribe. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. No, it just shows it shows YouTube that you care about what these people are doing. Doesn't mean you even have to come back and visit us. Just, yeah, it'd be nice. We if would you like don't. to have you here. We think we're one of the best channels to teach how to paint acrylics. But. Yeah, that's just us, but we think that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's just us. We just think that, you guys. We just think that. What can we say? We just call them just... like we see them. Yeah, it's all right. We call them like we see them. And... Sometimes I get very... I don't know about you guys, but I, I see something and I want to... Like, I want to paint this right now. I had something else planned for today, and I was yeah. looking at this thinking, you I know, like this... that shot. We have this, so many that are printed ready to paint, but something else comes up. Always, always coming up with new images to paint. Well, we got a few hundred to paint. So much to paint in so little time. Ginger Cook, how much do you charge to help design an original painting? Uh, I think we start at, um, what we start at, what, $20? Yeah. You know, and... It depends on how involved it gets and... You know, we start at $20 for... You know, if I guess if you hate it, then, you know, it's all right. It's a learning example. We'll, we'll try a few with people, and then we'll, we'll adjust the charges depending on, on the difficulty, right? Not of the person doing it, but as we go on, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'd help, you know, be happy to help anybody with that. Start at 20. You know, I, I, I put in the range between 20 and 50, depending upon the complexity. Um, how many times we have to go back to the drawing board with it? How many times we have to go back and it? forth? But yeah, I mean, uh, we can come up with some good stuff. What AI programs do you use and is it free or pay for? We use several different things and I do a lot of custom things once it's done over in the Photoshop. Yeah. So, well, and then also in Rebel. Yeah, so we, we'll, we'll we, spend hours, you know, fine. And yeah. then we go back to our photographs that we've taken. We do all kinds of stuff. We got such a library of stuff and, um, this. Most of all, all the AI stuff we use, we, we, we're paying the high end for it. 
yeah, we paid big bucks for that stuff. You know. Well, we'd love to have you. You know, just use the contact us on paintingwithginger.com and tell us what you're looking for. Tell us what you're looking for and what size you'd like to make it. Anything else? Any other criteria you may have? Sometimes I can, I'm doing something like this, I can sketch it in a little bit with these paint pens and kind of refine some of the details. It's nothing is ever just one color. Nothing is just one color, color. No, it's not. It's just, I think a lot of times people just quit too soon. You know? well, a lot of people get to the ugly stage and they just can't get past it. They go, oh my God, what have I created? And they just give up. Yeah, that's true. They go, I just can't finish this. There's, just, there's nothing here. And I always tell people to turn their painting upside down in their reference and then see what they see. Okay, just put my little pens away and get the brush out back and keep going. We're getting there, you guys. And appreciate you hanging out there. You know, I just could have painted this in the studio today and kind of sharing the experience of painting something like this. I realized it was fairly complicated um, painting to do. And yet it, it's just, um, it was fun, right? A little, more, a little tougher than you thought? Not tougher, just longer. I mean, I knew it was going to be this long, John. I don't know how long have I been painting this? A buck 48, and you left for 15, so buck 30. Oh, that's not bad. No. I figured when I looked at it, it was a two, two and a half hour. Not pretty much have your, your figured out anymore. Lots of layers, lots of colors in this. Absolutely. This is a 9 by 12. 9 by 12, right? That's what we did? Yeah, 9, yeah, by, nine 12. by 12. So what is the... Um, who gets the 9 by 12s? I will ask my cohort in crime. Well, that's that's drawing. We'll keep painting something else. That is a two-year reds and two-year purples. Get nine by twelves.
yeah, it's just, just like I say, little things like this. They take a little time, but they're fun when you when you do them. Oh yeah, rewarding to see the completion. Yeah, I would say that that's fair. White is one of those colors that uh, needs to be put on usually usually twice. Did you brighten it up? Yeah, because they your brush is dirty and you get you know it's going to pick up some of these other colors. And uh, you know that's not the best. Now, yellow is an interesting color. But the place, the the lengths that people went to to get um, to get you know to make the color yellow. Of course, there was saffron, which everybody knows about. Um, saffron is um, you know was a sought after you know sought after, and people people used uh, that for. Um, to, you know, to make yellow paint. And then they, um, in India, um, there was a process in which they used cow urine to make uh, paint. And I won't go into the process, but it was considered cruelty to animals at some point and banned. But, you know, for it, um, It's just funny to me that all the different ways that uh, people make um, you know people made paint in the olden days, a lot of it from gemstones and stuff. Um, the Virgin Mary was the only one um, there was a certain blue and it could only be she was the only one that could wear that color. Uh, blue and was was forbidden for anybody else to have it. Um, of course, kings kings could only wear purple. I think you know that you know, they called it royal purple. And uh, the reason a lot of the paintings that you see in museums from the olden times, you know, 1800s and stuff, the reason you see, you know, a lot of the paintings, with, besides the fact that this, there wasn't the plethora of colors that. Um, there are now, you can just go to the art store and buy, buy collar, you can buy anything. Which is pretty neat when you think about it. And one thing that happens with people is that if you live, for instance, in outside the United States and where, for instance, maybe golden paint isn't sold. Um, you, you may have a, brand, like for instance, old Holland, the Dutch paint. Uh, when we were in, we were in Holland, um, they were, fa Holland was just absolutely famous for all their art stores. You know, that's what, Absolutely famous for all that stuff, and um, 
Didn't we go? We went into an art store in Holland, didn't we, John? Uh, yeah. Can't remember what we bought. But you know, there was. Um, definitely, uh, you know, it's just because, just because it's made in the United States, you know, doesn't mean we're the only ones that make good paint. And I think that maybe there's, maybe it might be suggested by artists and they don't mean to suggest it because you, they got, you've got good paint everywhere, somewhere if you buy it. But there's good paint and there's stu student grade paint. And that's that's the rub on that is is the student grade paint uh, preventing you from being a good artist. One lady said, well, I just go to the dollar store and buy paint. And that's okay, but at, at some time that's all you can do, and I you know, says, "Well, that's all I can afford." And then they get real mad when I say something. But um, you should uh, save your pennies and at least get the titanium white. Yeah, for sure, right? Get gold and titanium white. At least give yourself a fighting chance. Yeah, for sure, right? Just give yourself absolutely, John. That's that that I was, that's so true. Give yourself a fighting chance of you know being successful at it. Um, you can use those stay wet palettes and not and save you know then the paint won't dry out so fast and you haven't lost it. Um, take your time reading the you know watching the videos, reading the instructions. For those of you who are wondering what happened to my daughter Cinnamon, she put out a newsletter today. Again, it's one of those things do you see newsletters. Um, they're planning a whole bunch of new activities for their people and their group. And everybody's fine now. And They've got big doings, but if you, I hesitate to comment on them because I'm not fully up to speed on what they're doing, right, John? They're doing all kinds of stuff from what I hear. No idea really what they're that. doing, right? But yeah, but they're doing stuff. They're doing stuff, right? So They're okay. Everybody's fine, though. Um, it, it, it's, this is kind of mean. Should I do it anyway? I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm, I'm a mean mom. <laughs> uh, I asked um, she who cannot be named, which is the little device. If you say her name, she starts talking. You know that one that's from Amazon, that device. Yeah. And last night we queried her on what the temperature was in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where Cinnamon lives. And I think they said it was something like... It was 12 degrees with a low of one. Uh-huh. You know, I said um, that's above zero. Yeah. I remember days like that. Don't miss them. I know. How crazy is that, isn't it? I mean, when you... I put my 30 years in. John, I got released. Good, good behavior. Yeah, when when you lived in Aspen, it didn't get cold like that. You would have thought it would, but it didn't get into those below zero temperatures like you guys get got. I don't know why. Um, at high altitudes, you could keep bananas in the refrigerator and they didn't spoil. And I don't know what that was about, or if anybody ever studied that. No pressure on them. Yeah, I know that when I was pregnant, I never had allergies. I don't know if anybody ever looked at if women, pregnant women get allergies or not. I didn't have any then. Well, it sounds like the place to move to. 
you know, well, um, I know the water was fabulous coming out of the tap, just small little things like that, you know, just saying, right? Small little things like that, but So start packing the bags? Uh, no, don't don't pack the bags quite yet, darling. Okay. Um. Going to drop down to the high 20s here tonight, and then I think the freezing temps are over, and the rain starts Monday. Oh, goody! That's according to our weather reporter, Miss Becky. Miss Becky on? Okay, hi Becky. She doesn't live in Houston, but she's close to where we live. She's south and, of us. And so she knows stuff. Becky knows things. We don't know things, and Becky no. always calls us and tells us when to. And we appreciate bad things, that. I had to go out. Bad and things are going to happen because otherwise we don't know. And so we appreciate always, the, She's always happy to tell us. Appreciate the forecast. Oh, we're we too do. busy. We're in the studio. We don't know what the rest of the world's doing. We don't. We live in our own little art world. We do. And to tell you, this is now that I'm getting into a little bit of the details of this is fun. Well, you're going to make somebody happy with it, I would hope. You know, I hope someone is going to love this. This one. So quite, where'd that go? So as I said, finish painting this rather fun little painting out of the stuff. Guess we should continue on with some other stories. Um, it's hard to paint. But you know, you paint with the you know the, either the right or left side of your brain. But when you're painting. It's hard to switch to find your math, math side of your brain. And your uh, creative side. And it really is, it, it's a challenge to do that. Well, that's my problem. And the reason being is that uh, just the way the mind works, um, you're, you know, you've got your math side, the one that can total up your bills. So if you've been paying bills all day, you may not know this, but if you've been paying bills all day, um, you, and then you go to paint, you're going to be, and then say, I just can't get into the mood to paint. Ask yourself what you've been doing. Okay, because what you were doing makes a big difference. And if you're in, if you're in a, a mode where you're all business, turning around. And getting into creative is tough. Now, 
if you're in a creative mode and you need to paint uh, and you need to do start painting paying your bills that's easy to you can switch back pretty easy with that the switch problem the switching problem happens when you try to go the other way I don't know if anybody's ever talked about that John have we ever talked about that not really and I often hear people say oh I'm just I cannot get in the moods to paint but if you've got financial worries or business worries or you're maybe you're going to close on a house and buy it or something in your life happening that's not particularly creative, you will find that um, trying to get into that painting mode is darn near next to impossible. And it isn't because it isn't because you don't want to paint. It's that it's just hard to get your mind to switch gears. <coughs> you really are switching gears. <coughs> so John, I think I'm going to need some water. Maybe I have some water here. Okay. down here the longer I have to fool with this the easier it is to do but I would say before you start painting the best advice that maybe is just get happy huh Try to get into a happy place. Always good to be happy. If you can. Though an awful lot of artists have been very successful painting things that are kind of like maybe your standards dark. And I think that's always a surprise, don't you, John? Yep. That they it is nice snowing in Houston. We had a little dusting. Dallas got some snow. Yeah, Dallas gets it. Dally, Dallas did. South. Dallas got a little snow, didn't they? Um, the pinks on this and the scarf I don't know how many times I painted this one white
Okay, I just got tons of these little tiny brushes and they just don't do much. You know that, John? They just got so many of these funny little tiny ones. And they don't do diddly squat. But this definitely reminds me of those um, those perfume. Well, the perfume bottles that, that I saw in the, um, the museum were, you know, really not like this at all. But when Cinnamon and I went to France, we went to a lot. Of, we went to some perfume man. We did our own tours. Went to some perfume manufacturers. And uh, that was fun, right? We did cool. we did that, and we um, John and I have not done that. But you know, sometimes you can. Have you ever thought about just you know when you're cruising, you do your these, you pay people big bucks to do an excursion. But John and I figured out that you can do it for a lot less just with a taxi driver at a hundred bucks is a tenth of what these excursions are costing these days and it's just you and you can go where you need to go and, he, and he's a local guy so he knows all the stuff yeah he knows what you ought to see what you might not want to see what you need to see yeah yeah we had a good guy in Ireland yeah we did right and and grab another one for my layers. But when we were in, in Europe, we had, we had this one guy, we were in Cork, and um, we, we were gonna, we, got, we took the, well, the, the cruise actually didn't got, get off in Cork proper. Um, so we had to take the, we took a train um, to, well, it's an hour train ride, and then we ended up in Cork, right? Then um, the uh, this taxi guy was there, and so he owned his own cab, and it was was an electric cab, which is interesting. No, he was uh, propane. It was oh, was that was propane? That one was yeah. propane. It was propane. He had a propane tank. Oh, okay. Yeah, the the electric guy was in somewhere else. The electric guy was Ireland. Was in uh, was Scotland, right? No, Ireland. His was electric. Well, that's what I was talking about. The electric guy in Cork, right? That wasn't Cork. No, that was that other little town. And well, he had to go take his. He had to go to a farm. Oh to yeah, get to get it. I thought that was filled. Scotland, man. That could have been Scotland. I thought that was Scotland myself, but then you know. You know, it's just like Didi, I want to contradict you. <laughs> well, we can go Still through, want to see you for Thanksgiving, my film, right? We can, we can certainly Still? figure it out. I got footage, baby. Always got footage. Yeah, John got pictures. But anyway, the Ireland was really fun. And uh, I'm going around putting my lights and darks back. That's always so fun, isn't it? Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. And
That guy in Ireland knew everybody. And we went to this little fish shack where this lady was just, uh, her husband was a fisherman. She had like this little thing on the side of the road. And uh, you could get, uh, you just got the fish from her. And I mean, it was way cool. And there was some of the best, I mean, I don't know what kind of fish it was, but I got a little fish sandwich. Unbelievable. You wouldn't think you'd get such good. Well, everywhere John and I went, we discovered that Ireland had the food, man. Absolutely. Ireland, we really have somebody from Ireland food. that watches us, and I tell you what, you just don't know how much better your food is. It's shocking. I got to tell you, it is. It's shocking. How much better it is. Just anyway, he drove us all around. We got some great pictures. Really, really outstandingly good pictures. Getting down to almost the end of this. You'll see them some there. There's just so many layers of color in this painting. That, you know, I start these things and I forget. I go to paint it, just there's so many. You know, like for instance, if you're talking about art licensing, for instance, which we weren't, but we are now. Um, licensing is where you, for instance, sell your artwork to, say, a company like, say, makes greeting cards like Hallmark, okay? And they pretty much pay a flat rate for the art, okay? So it doesn't really matter to them that you uh, paid, um, you took, um, you were painting a wolf and you spent 16 hours or six, six months on this wolf and, um, and you painted every, uh, every little hair. Uh, or if you just sat down and had a dream about a snowman and just knocked one out in about um, 10 minutes with some fast brush strokes and um, like that, they don't care. They're paying the same amount of money. A lot of people want to charge for their time. And you've got to be careful about doing that because it's really, it's not something you can really fairly charge for because it might take you longer to do something than someone else that can do it in five minutes because maybe they've been painting longer than you and uh, that's not their fault. And so that's just something to, I would say, think about when you're, when you're thinking about, well, what am I going to charge? I've got all these hours in it. Well, a doctor may take out your appendix. He can do it maybe in 30 minutes. But how many hours did he spend in medical school? So I bet it was more than 30 You minutes. can't go by time. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't recommend it. I do not recommend going by time for that reason, that you, um, you want to be careful. Here, this brush is getting thrown in the trash. Let's start another one. I feel like Goldilocks. Um, you, don't, you don't want to do, you know, it's just, but on the other hand, you want to make sure you cover the cost of your materials. And if you've got somebody, we've said this before, but I think it's worth repeating. If you've got somebody in your family that says, will you do me a painting, do ask them to, to cover the cost of your canvas and not just how much paint you used, but the actual tubes of paint. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. You know, so, it, 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 so you're not just the, the 
paint that you're using for their painting, but you still have to have white. And, um, and you may need that white for something else, but you're using it for them. So maybe you're giving them a little tiny bit of white. You're not using that much, but now you have to go out and buy a whole other tube. So generally, I tell people at least factor in how much um, uh, how how much you're you're um, you're spending on um, materials because that makes a difference. Yes and yes. All those things make a difference. Are you seeing something, John? Someone's asking about the clay pot on the windowsill that's on the outside. Yeah, the clay pot's on the outside of outside the windowsill. The window. It's just sitting out there on the windowsill. But we should put some little flowers going down over the side of it like that. Not talk about it too much. Just gave you more outside, that's all. Then I let it dry a little bit and then I see something else. Turn around, I just see one more thing to paint. Well, of all the places we would go back to to want to visit, Ireland certainly comes to mind, doesn't it, John? Absolutely. That's, those are the, those are just, uh, John, uh, Cinnamon Cooney was talking about moving to Ireland for a while. We can understand why they wanted to. Um, my uh, grandparents, original on the birth certificate, grandparents were um, Irish immigrants. My birth father was um, born in the States, but his father was not. Get ready for the for the mirror, John. For the big unveil. For the big unveil. Just thinking. Just a couple things I want to do. Very curious if people are what people think about this picture. Should we do a vote? Yeah. Oh, I could do a vote. Hey, let me do a poll. We still got 50 people on or so, I think, maybe. And what do we got out there? Yeah, we got enough. Engage with the audience. Start a pool.
I was doing a poll while I'm just finishing this up. This is very much the deal where I'm, people say, I wish I was, I could just be in an artist studio and watch them paint. We try to tell as many stories as we can, but sometimes um, you're going to get kind of rambling, artist ramblings too, because Okay, I've started a poll, folks. Just Get in there and start voting. Do you like the current painting? Would you like to see a similar one in the Academy of the Tutorial? So you have yes and yes, or yes and no, or no. Those are your three options. I expect everybody to participate. You do. 100% participation. Well, that's good to want things, I think. I think that's healthy. Well, doesn't hurt to ask for it. I'm just still putting the lights in dark places. Come on, people. 16 votes. There's more of you out there than that. I have a counter. So what's the deal right there with that? Whoops. Well, right now it's yes and yes. Okay. 18 yes and yes. Well, I never know what people are going to think. You know, I thought the this was kind of a neat picture. screen is camera not focused. No, check your settings. Go down to your little gear. It'll probably drop you down to 144. YouTube likes to do that. So go down to your settings. In the window, push your mouse over to the lower right corner. You'll have a little gear there. Change the resolution. I know, pain in the tush. Joyce says it reminds me of my grandmother's house. Yeah, it is. It is like an, um, like a, a kind of like a boudoir, right? Well, I don't know if that's the right term. Well, that's not a bad term, Josh. <laughs> boudoir isn't a dirty term. It's just a you know, ladies, ladies' dressing table, right? That's what that is, you know, just. We have seven, 27 votes so far, it's 96% and 4%. I like it, but I'm not interested in painting it. And that's okay. No, it's all right. We're trying to get a, a, a feel for what you folks like to paint. It's so hard with so many subjects in the world. Well, there are. And the queen can paint anything. I tried to stump her, and I haven't stumped her yet. Well, I guess tractors have stumped her. Gotta draw the line somewhere, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but why on a tractor? No, we're not doing tractors, ever. So, just so you know. Don't want you to get your hopes up. Wouldn't be fair. All right, go grab the frame. I'll see what else I have to do with this while I'm um, finishing up, OK? Yes, my queen. Let's see, 9 by 12, I got gold, I'm thinking gold now, you know, I might want dark with that one. I think I do. I think I got a dark one in here right now, do I? No. Really big, make that baby set off.
So the lights and darks back in. I was looking for frames. You can hear the banging and clattering around back there while he's deciding what could go in this, right? Are you picking on me? No. I mean, I, I, me. I know where we live. I know exactly what happened. <laughs> All right. You have to dry it off for me. Yeah, I think I'll just give it a quick... Give it a quick dry now. I'm sure it'll be okay. I'm not here in the hair dryer. No, I'm just adding a few little bits yeah. of color. Well, I wasn't sure how long this would take me to paint, but it's sort of fun, right? Kiddo, go for it. Okay. Here we go. Now, once it's in the frame, there's no more painting on it. Hm? Well, we have to still paint on it, silly. Oh, no. No painting. Oh, we just have it's to see framed. where we are with it when fin finish it. Ready for this? Da da da. Uh huh. Isn't that fun, huh? I think it's a work of art. Well, you know, it's uh, it's nostalgia. That's what stuff like this is. It's it's just, you know, you're somebody you know. I mean, I didn't have a dresser like that, but you're right. You know, one of my friend's grandmothers did. I didn't have a dresser like that. No. So this kind of thing is fun because it's, I think it's very different. You too, John, don't you think so? Absolutely. A lot of colors and layers in this. So this works because I, I put, you know, I made that real effort to get them all in, okay? Put them all in. And being able to mix the colors is very helpful. So again, we talked about that in summary. Uh, I guess we could say in summary from what we talked about today. Two-year-olds can learn tricks faster than you can imagine. <laughs> when you think they can't, they can. Um, A lot of colors in this painting. Oh, there are. And the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that the, the more paint you have on it and dried, the easier it is for the next layer to stick. It'll grab. The next layer will then grab if you've done that. All right. So. It takes a little patience oh yeah there is that 
I guess that would be the main thing, right? But then when you when you're done, you've got some good contrast. But again, like for instance, every time I put this white out, all right. I mean, I know, I swore I put some white on the shoulder of this bottle and gave it a white top. This one had one too. Sometimes you just have to put it back. That's something to take in mind too. Just This is a busy place to sign. I think I'll sign it right here on the edge. Right here, John, what are you thinking? Hmm. What color? Oh, uh, I don't know, white. what I'm thinking. All right, I'll take a little, I guess I could do a light blue Posca pen right here too. I think of, white might just be too much. Yeah, it might be. Because this has got a lot going on in this picture. I'll shake this up. Well, anyway, thanks you guys for hanging out with us. You know, painting these perfume bottles. I was got this very fun to paint. This, this was very fun for me to paint. And uh, that's not going to show up. It's going to have to be white, darling. We can glaze it back later. Did yeah. you know you can do that? You can let the white dry and then go back and glaze the color. All right. I'm going to just turn this sideways and paint it, do it up this way. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, it'll work. We'll let that, we'll let that dry and then we'll put the stripe through it. I don't know, I don't like it. It's all right. Well, next time you see it, I'll have a different signature. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy painting. Remember, you got to be kind of in a good mood to paint. If you're in your math, I've got to pay bills. But that's almost impossible to pull that off. So, um, you know, schedule your time. You deserve the time to do it. Don't try to paint right after you've just decided the electric bill was, you're being overcharged by the electric company. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just <laughs> try, don't do that. Oh, Love you guys. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Thanks for the donations that came in today. I guess I'm going to leave that because it's now dry. And um, what the heck, right? So uh, we thank you guys very much. Keeps everybody going uh, strong when you do that. We thank you so much for all your help. Let's bring that back a little further. And we'll see you next one. time on the next exciting story time video. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll Bye. see you next time. Bye. Bye.